everybody. Welcome to Hilton's Parish Council meeting on the 4th of September, October. Right, I hope you've got agendas, you've had supporting documents and whatever. Um, item number one, uh, 109, is to receive any apologies for absence and declarations of interest. Uh, apologies from Peter at Ian Anshan. So just down to the five of us tonight. Any declarations of interest? No? Okay. Um, so then, moving on to, this is the point where um, Comments and observations from members of the public and to receive reports from county and district councils. Obviously, we have no county and district councils. Yeah, Doug. Yeah, Doug. I'm sorry. You've been quiet, just bubbling along. <laughs> I do apologise. I saw you, you were, you were very much in the driving seat, so I'm sorry. Yeah. Uh, do you wish to send it to us, though? Nice? Oh, I can do. I'll just give you a quick rundown, Alice. Yes. Thank you. Uh, yeah, the county council is finally been to settle down after the change of administration. Um, a few things that have been going on for a while are uh, coming to a, uh, to a good head, in, in my opinion. The um, move out of Cambridge into the new Shire Hall at Alconbury is working at a pace now. We've actually started meeting there. Um, that has the advantage insofar as um, part of the project was always to get the county decentralised, so we have to keep more people in the area making decisions and working with, with uh, the local councils and members than. Uh, was, was before, so that's um, a good thing. It also releases quite a amount of capital because you imagine building the size of a shire hall in Cambridge will put quite a lot into the coffers of the county council that we can then reinvest in services. So uh, that's underway. The other thing that I'm most pleased about is we're starting finally to uh, appoint officers, starting at the senior ones. I don't know if the last time we spoke, I don't think we'd appointed the new head of transport. So uh, we've got a lady there starting on the 1st of November who's uh, coming down from Lancashire. She's actually moving into the area. It's one of the things. I was worried about you get too many officers who nowadays drop in, do the work for the week, and move away. But she's actually lived, going to be living here. Um, she's got a good background in uh, local government administration, especially on those type of services. So uh, I'm, I'm, I'm pleased that she's here. Two of the three subdirector jobs that were empty as well, immediately under her, have now been filled, and people are starting in those immediately. And the third one, we've got an interim, but he's on a long-term basis. He's not an interim for a month or two and then off. So we've actually got teams on the ground. The net effect of that now means that the officers on the ground around here were still short of two. But what I have managed to do is uh, Purloin, one from uh, the South Cams area, who are meeting up with regularly, and uh, he's really quite a useful connection. So if we have things that need doing here, I'll arrange that to have done in the Hemingfords next weekend to uh, get him out on his Saturday morning off his that willing to help that he's coming out in his off time as well and um, he's reacting well to things that need doing so that's that's good news because i felt for a long while there's been quite a few issues around that that haven't worked um on highways as well the a14 still hasn't um sorry the old a14 as it was now now the 1307 still hasn't been held, handed over to the county council there's a lot of issues there around slip roads and various other things where the uh, road surfaces are still not, not up to standard and it's acceptable for the county to take them over and pay for them going forward but Highways England have got to hand them over in good order so uh, there's still quite a bit of work there but we have made a good connection there with uh, one of the Highways England officers who seems to be responsible for tidying up so that could be useful as well. Other issues throughout the uh, county council is the new council seems to still be in the throes of reorganising itself so it's spending more time re re renaming committees and deciding on Things like you know, people my age need paternity leave or not, which seems slightly uh, ridiculous. But you know, um, instead of sitting down and saying we had a big flood issue in this whole district, in fact the whole county last year, and we're coming into flood season again, we're no nearer getting forward on that. So I'm tabling a motion at the next council to actually try and jimmy that along a bit. The uh, county council had, has this grandiose uh, title of being the lead flood agency, but unfortunately at the moment they don't seem to have any muscles behind them to flex on that. So I'm going to try and. Uh, drive that forward a bit. Otherwise, normal pressures with no one knows um, uh, what the uh, settlements will be next year. So the budget work's starting to figure out how much uh, it's um, needed to actually run the whole council uh, for the county next year. I mean, the message is coming through at the minute is there's going to be severe shortages and I think some difficult decisions are going to have to be made. And as always, with um, places like Cambridgeshire, probably two-thirds to three-quarters of all our money is spent on um, 
either adult or children's social care and, and the things around it. So 75% of the money is spent in those areas. Um, whereas my, because of the area that we're in, probably that's about 5% of my workload, it's probably 75% in things like highways where at the moment, I think the highways emergency budget for the whole county is 685,000, which is, you know, we have a great weekend out on it, but it's not going to solve the highway issues for the whole county. So uh, we're trying to find uh, ways of driving that forward in different ideas. Um, and some of the new people who've come in are quite, have been quite innovative in where they've worked before and in ways of doing things. So hopefully that will produce some good results. Other than that, I um, think, as I say, I can't think of anything terrible to tell you or terribly good either. You know, it's, it, it's been blowing along. Um, I don't know if you're aware, Dave Mead, who's the district councillor, um, was poorly for a while. He managed to get, him, get, get COVID, which was quite, you know, which hit him quite badly. So he's trying to catch up with work in a minute. But I'm trying to persuade him that uh, if needs be, I'll do his report. So at least you're getting something from there. At the minute, I could do them, but at the minute, I'm not the district councillor, so I can't. So if you're happy with that going forward, I'll ask him if he'd like me to, and I can tell you a bit what's going on there. Um, and, and other than that, quite happy to take any questions. Thank you. Any questions? Yes, thank you. Great. Right. Thank, thank, thank you very much. Please feel free to, to stay or leave the field as time and rush out. Thank you. <laughs> any, uh, the meeting's now closed, so uh, any members of the public wish to speak on any items on the agenda? Uh, Andy? Uh, yeah, I'm really pleased to see uh, item 117 uh, to consider whether there's a further arrangement where parishioners can speak informally to councillors prior to the council meeting. I think we've asked for this quite a long time. Uh, I don't know what format it'll take, but it'd be really good to have that sort of more casual approach to having discussions with councillors than the current arrangements. So, looking forward to that. Okay, well, thank you much. Better in mind to wait for on. Um, anybody else wish to say anything? Okay, I'll go back to the closed session. Um, and item number 110 is to approve the minutes of the parish council meeting held on the Monday the 6th of September. Um, there's quite a few meetings that need to be uh, minutes to be approved, so please take them one at a time. Uh, Monday 6th of September was a normal parish council meeting. Um, are we all okay with that now? Ember mm -hmm. wasn't here. Wasn't you were. Uh, okay. Okay, fair enough. <laughs> you put the so there's obviously enough for us to um, to vote on that. Are we happy with what, what we saw? No, you were present. I'm oh, sorry. Six thousand. No. Oh, that's due to me. So that's terribly. Are we okay with that? Yeah. Provided you have us abstain or then sort of Sarah, are you happy? Yeah. I'm going to propose that there's something for me. Happy to second the program. Okay, that's the service. Um, abstentions? Are you going to stay or are you going against? Uh, I wasn't there. Yeah, you need to stay. Do I? Yeah. Anyway, otherwise, there's no open vote on that one. Okay, thank you very much. Um, okay, then moving on to the next one. This was the EO, um, the Extraordinary Parish Council meeting held on the 21st of September when we were discussing the fireworks. Um, you've had the minutes of that. Are we happy, those that were there? Are we are you happy? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So I pose I sign those. Can I have a second of that, please? Bob, second in the you. Okay, that's three of us. And I'm hoping two abstentions. Mm -hmm. Brilliant, okay. Am I forcing the vote? Yes, <laughs> <laughs> sorry. Okay, and then uh, the next one is the planning a planning meeting uh, that was held. Mr. Oh, Mr. I thought it was four. The finance committee then then met after the uh, EO meeting on the 21st Tuesday. Um, Kieran, are you happy with those? Yeah. I'm going to propose that we oh, I sign them. So if you second and approve that, that's mm -hmm. fine. Okay. And the other three, as you weren't there, I'm hoping you're going to abstain. Mm -hmm. Brilliant. Thank you very much. Um, and then finally, uh, we come to the planning committee meeting where um, we were discussing a shed in the back garden of Cobb Cottage. Um, that was on Thursday, 23rd of September. Kieran, are you happy with the minutes? Yes. Okay, so am I. I propose we sign them. Kieran seconding and approving it. So two of us. Thank you much. And I'm hoping the other three who weren't there will have staying. So. Mm -hmm. Right.
Fine, thank you very much. Um, item 111 is matters arising from the last meeting to the report. Information only, no discussion. Um, and this is where our clock fills us in on the things that happened in the month. So it's part of the tree inspection regime um, that the council submitted to the insurers. They've uh, asked us to have a register of trees to hold a record of inspections. So Ian and I are currently going to go around and compile that this month. So hopefully that will be completed by the next meeting. The uh, Dana Dry easement is now being registered with the land registry. Um, and we've got confirmation of that and an updated copy of the register. Um, Peter attended the CAA consultation regarding the London Legion arrivals um, and has given us a short paragraph to say that uh, it was chaired by the Civil Aviation Authority to hear views from interested parties. There are approximately 10 speakers, including himself. The themes were quite similar, questioning the validity of the construction of, of the consultation, sorry, as it appeared to fall outside the airspace modernisation strategy, didn't give an option to object and with blight areas that are currently air traffic free. He also mentioned that there appeared to be no noise monitoring prior to any implementation, uh, which was also raised by others. The representatives of the CAA listened and checked that they understood what each person speaking had raised. There's no actions to come out of that at this point. He also attended a 20s Plenty online meeting, um, and requests were made for all those present to lobby not only their only local county councillor, but also the adjacent one, asking when the county council are going to implement this policy across the county. I explained that it, Peter explained that in Hilton we supported the campaign, but we're not going to be lobbying hard on the subject this year as we're concentrating on our LHI bid to ban HGVs from the village. Um, and Peter recommends that we continue to advertise that we have stickers for the use. The uh, community gritting scheme has been advised, advertised on the website, Facebook and <coughs> Spectrum, but no volunteers have yet come forward. <coughs> With regards to the LHI bid for 21-22, which is for the HGV van, uh, HAT has kindly supplied recent data as requested by the County Council, which has been submitted to the requesting officer and I've had confirmation that she's received that. Um, the police have commented uh, to state that whilst they're not wholly supportive of the proposal and are unlikely to prioritise enforcement of an HGV ban, they're also unlikely to formally object to it. So that's seen as a, a, a good step on the road. Um, the next stage is to engage with the County Council's policy and regulation team. The, uh, excuse me, the LHI for 22-23 for a 30 mile an hour limit across the green and improvements to the surface of the force have been submitted and confirmation received. The application deadline has now been extended to the 14th of October, and I don't know what effect that will have then to the entire process. Um, the Spectrum article was submitted. Unfortunately, there was some editorial glitch and meant that the paragraph regarding litter was removed and also inserted a random type on the bottom. Um, but I spoke with the editor, he's not sure how it happened. Um, the WI plaques that the council agreed to donate money for have been installed on the no WI bench and I've advised the president of the uh, typo on the bench. Um, and I attended the recent CAP conference and I've provided you all with a written report. Um, so if you do have any questions on that, do let me know. And that's me done. <coughs> okay. Um, right, to review the item 112 is to review and ratify the decisions made under the scheme of delegation. Um, there were two items that were passed off under the delegation scheme. So the clerk attended the Capella conference as just advised. Uh, the cost of the council was £75 with a one-off agreement that the attendance would not be included in her working hours. Uh, the other item is that a shredding company was instructed to shred the old paperwork from the filing cabinets and the village hall off at a cost of £50 to £100. So those are those. Um, Two items. Do I need to take questions on that? Are you okay with them? Okay. Thank you very much. Would you like to ratify those decisions? Uh, yes, that was a good idea. So I propose that we accept those and ratify those decisions. Um, can I have a second of that proposal? Do you agree? All in favour? Mm -hmm. Brilliant. Thank you very much. That's good. Um, right, item 113 is the Green Open Spaces Working Group. Um, I'll just go down here. Here. The first item um, is to receive a general report from the working group, normally by Ian, but I 
hopes are curious. Yeah, I to do this in what's been happening. Thank you. Yeah. So uh, a lot of the things. Well, we met on the 29th of September, the Open Spaces Working Group. Uh, a lot of things on our agenda were. So I'll just give a quick, quick uh, overview. Um, there was a, uh, Ian and our friend, the uh, tree surgeon, did their usual tree set survey on the 5th of August, and um, so and the various works that are required on the trees have now been identified for the next season and I believe uh, Ian has now got a quote from one tree surgeon he's now looking at uh, getting the other two. Um, we discussed the up and coming um, tender for the maintenance contract for the green uh, and open spaces. Um, that took a, a major part of the meeting in terms of time. Uh, what you've got before you is the outcome of that um, for our discussion tonight. Um, main highlights are that we've broken it into two parts now, so that it's, we're going to quote uh, two sections of it separately. Um, and um, we've uh, basically just modernised it a bit and added a few little bits and pieces in, such as the, uh, the cricket uh, area, which has uh, been done separately in the past outside of the contract, now that's part of it. Ditch clearing is now part of it. So uh, it's, a much, it's more extensive and generally a better um, reflection of what requires, it's required to be done. Um, but, but, so we'll come on to that in a bit. Um, we didn't get through all the whole of our agenda. Um, we did talk about the trees in Tide Lane and they were cleared on Saturday. So we had a small group of us went out and did that. Um, where are we coming on to? Um, yes, uh, we've had a, um, a note from uh, a parishioner about the state of the culverts and ponds on Gravely Way and uh, what we might be, uh, what we should be doing to prepare for another wet winter, should we have one. Um, they've been inspected in generally good condition. There is some silt in there, but the feeling is that that will wash through once we get some water flow. But we will um, monitor them closely in the coming months. I think that's more or less it until. Do you want to go on to the main item? Uh, that would be going back to that, that piece. That might just take a set of time or something. Yeah, I'll get a few going on. So, do I need to. Um, do we need to approve that report? That was me. Yeah, I think I think there's more tricky one coming later on. Right. Okay. So moving on to 113.2. Um, this is all part of the, the new contract, really, because um, historically, uh, Hill Parish Council has included the churchyard in the grass cutting regime. Um, we're now advised that this is a bit questionable. Um, and it's just, uh, we have to be, that the parish council has to be sure that they're happy for this situation to continue. Now, you've had the um, supporting documents in front of you. Um, do I need to read it all out? Yeah. Okay, so there's a lot in there. Um, it's a question of whether you're happy for this to continue. Uh, there's a, there's, there's basically, there's two, there's two laws, one an 1894 law that says we shouldn't be helping the church, and then there's a 1972 law um, that says that uh, we can we can tend a, um, a, a burial ground where residents may be buried. So there's a bit of conflict there. Um, now we're recommending that we shouldn't be doing it, but uh, bearing in mind we don't have for so long, um, it's a question of whether we continue that process. So this is a old piece of law that says church and state shouldn't mix with the state as a church. So that's why I guess the older law takes precedence. So uh, in prior to the 1894 Act, 1894 Act is the creation of parish councils. So prior to that, the parish would have been managed by the vestry. And so this act basically separated them into two. So you had a parochial church council and the vestry that managed the church affairs and the parish council that managed everything else. So that's where that act comes from and it creates the parish council that you 
currently enjoy today. Um, but the, the say you then got the 72 Act, which provides this conflict, um, which appears to give you permission to do it. But to say, I've given you now a summary of it, and their view is that the specific provision in the 1894 Act overrides the general position in the 72. But you wouldn't be the first councillor to decide that you could go with the 1972 Act and say there's no judicial review to give you an absolute answer. So until this case, uh, this, this law is actually tested in a court, you're not going to get a definitive answer one way or the other, unless Parliament decides to resolve the laws, but I can't see that happening anytime soon. You do have an additional dilemma in the fact that once the churchyard is full, becomes a closed churchyard, you then as a parish council get first dibs, if you like, on um, maintaining that and uh, owning that uh, land. So then of course it would revert back to being your responsibility to maintain. If the parish council chooses not to take on the, that closed churchyard, it would then become the responsibility of the district. So you sort of practically moving on for it for 10 years' time. Mm. I mean, I think bear in mind we don't have so long, and if it was not kept tight, I think you could, you could say because it's an essential part of the village, it would have quite a, an adverse effect if it wasn't cut to its current regime or, or proposed regime. It's just a question of whether you, you feel comfortable. I mean, I was suggesting in the new contract that we keep a record of just how much that's costing us to maintain the church yard, aren't we? Yes, yes. Yeah, so that's that seems fine to me. Continuing on. Okay, that's good. So, so therefore, item 113.2, uh, I would propose uh, that uh, we continue to contribute to the maintenance of the churchyard. Financially contribute. Can I have a second to that, please? Keep it all in favour? Brilliant. Okay, thank you very much. So moving on to 113.3, this is the draft maintenance tender. Uh, the six pages of this, I don't really want to go through it, but obviously um, if there are any questions, uh, hopefully we can, we can uh, address them. Um, as I understand it, it's basically on the current regime, I mean, parishioners should notice no difference in terms of what's being done. No great difference. No. Just a bit of fine tweaking in there. Um, uh, Heather, Heather did raise some points on that separate email to me. Do you want me to just run through those? Yeah, sure. So the first one was we refer to man hours, we're not supposed to. So we can change that to working hours. Or just hours. Yeah, yeah okay. That's number one. Number two, uh, I think this is a terminology issue. Um, we refer to the square as being the 20 by 10 metre bit in the middle, which I believe is going to continue to... It's fine. Yeah. I'm not having any communication to the country. Okay. So, do not change from this unless we need to. But we have moved the outfield separately to the contract, and now we're pulling it into the contract. So... Putting it into the contract's a really good idea. Yeah. I just think we ought to verify whether the square itself is going to be continued, be continued to be maintained by one of our patients. I had a conversation, I didn't think that was going to be the case okay. anyway. Okay. Well, we might have to treat that separately anyway, because it's, it might be without, without outside the scope of a normal maintenance contractor. And then my other question would be, we have one cricket match this year. Do we need to continue to maintain that? Or do we need to be proactive in having a cricket club and actually using it and letting other cricket clubs use it? Well, that's always been our thought. You know, we've got a pavilion and we need to make plans for that in the future too. If we don't have a it it's kind of makes that more difficult. Um, as, and as far as having uh, maintain a mowed outfield, that's also useful, useful for other things. You know, it's, um, it's useful in the summer, um, because the rest of it is hay, and it's not so, it just provides a bit of um, mowed space for people to have picnics and things like that. Uh, your, your last point was, um, about work like overhanging branches, pavements. Yeah, the gravel, the gravel is the next point. Oh, sorry. Uh, yes, gravel, that would be, I mean, we, we, it would be provided by the parish council somehow. So it's not something that the contractor will have to habitually buy. Um, we will make sure that when it has one is needed, it will be available. Does that need to be in the contract? Uh, 
There is something there about the uh, the large uh, work at that point. Mm -hmm. It's right, so I'll just check them again, but I'm pretty sure we're on that. Yeah, we'll be seeing it. Yeah, it's on that. As long as it's in there, that's fine, don't you? Yeah. Surface dressing will be provided by HPC. Maybe we should say the material should be required. Or surface dressing material? Yeah. Okay. Material for the surface dressing. Yeah. Um, and then the last issue was um, overhanging branches, pavements, and tight lane. Um, in the past, we've always dealt with those through the directed hours. So it's not specifically said in the contract that we've got to be done on a certain time or a certain number of occasions. It's just something that's happened um, incidentally and is covered by those 30 hours of directed hours. Good. Thank you. Um, I think the other thing to point out is that we were going to go for a two-year contract, weren't we? Yes. And then we sort of decided that maybe a three-year would be more interesting to the contracts. And is that the same? We're now going for a three-year contract? Yeah. Well, that's in the current draft. Yeah. Okay. Just, um, I mean, we had been talking verbally, as you do, uh, about a two-year contract to keep it below the 25,000, but then we, all, we will go back for a formal open tender. Because the contract is expected to be around the 10k mark and it's a three year contract, it's considered to be a 30k contract, so then it exceeds your 25k on the public contracts regulations. I think also the idea is to try and get this out early so that we can get our res or responses before Christmas, is that the hope? So that if the prices are horrendous, we're giving them the waves of fine tuning or I'll say fine tuning, brassy cuts and all that. So it'd be awkward if it sort of came in on March the 1st and we found it. The budget wasn't going to suit, so there is some sort of pressure to get it up there um, just to see what sort of responses we get. So, is there a general consensus that we send this out as it is? Yeah? Okay. With those amendments? Yeah, with those amendments. Okay. Can I have a second of that, please? I'll oppose the two amendments. Oops, second here. All in favour? Brilliant. Thank you very much. That's good. And thanks for all that work. Um, okay. Uh, Item 113.4, to consider the design of the A14 legacy project. Now, this is uh, to do with the shoring up of the wall on the wet pond. This is the pond at the, uh, the crossroads of Gravely Way and Potton Road. Um, the bank has been getting a bit thinner over the years. And we were successful in a bid with the A14 legacy project. They had that shored up and they've come back with a drawing of what they are proposing. Um, and the question is, are we happy with what's been proposed? Originally, version 2 um, was going to have a, a little, it was going to have stones between the end of the pond, the pond edge, and the road. This was in an attempt to have a path, uh, but we thought, the well, greenhouse spaces thought that might be a bit harsh compared to what's currently there. So version 2, which is the one before us tonight, is to have a mud infill and seed it so it will look hopefully more or less like it does now, although it has to be said there will be a, a harder face to the, the end of the pool, the pond, because that's going to be concrete, um, concrete gravel balls. Uh, I think the hope is that they will green out um, and they shouldn't be too obvious because the pond is generally in line with Gravely Way. Obviously there's a corner, so you might see as you come along graduate towards Potman Road. Um, but that's, that's it's an expensive project. If we if it's not accepted, I don't quite know what will happen because at some point that work will need to be done. And the general consensus is that it's our pond, so we would be responsible for replacing the bank. So um, there is some sort of pressure because obviously A fourteen was finished some time ago. So we do need to be relatively um, speedy in our response time without pressurising too much. Are you all happy or not happy? But are you all sort of content with the drawings? Do you understand the drawings? Enough information? Mm -hmm. yeah. Any sort of adverse comments? Sarah, you sort of feel sort of. Yeah, no, I think what you said about the um, 
the grass rather than the stones mm -hmm. is better. Mm -hmm. I mean, more like it is now. Yes. Because the ducks do sit on that bit. Yes, yeah. And there's something about it being 1.5 metres wide, which is, I haven't measured all of it, but I bet it's probably wider than parts are at the moment. Yeah, no, It's actually good. Um, at the moment, it looks like they're trying to go, they're trying to keep the grass level with them and it persuade them to make it a bit like a, a bank rather than... Yeah, the... you said that it will have to be the same level as the road. Okay. Because of the interference with the carriageway. Yeah. Okay. So we need to now some, allow some money to put some more mud on top to make it do bang. Thank God. That's what you mentioned. That's really good. The bit by the road is tiles. Yes, but it's, 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 it's this, this, okay. this is a mention of 1.5. Has that been agreed with them? What is that? It's on the drawing. It's on, sorry, it's on the photo. I, I didn't want to see it. Oh, yeah. 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 It's, um, yeah. But that photo is originally from version one, so it does mention stones, but I'm pretty confident that that just bit hasn't been changed, so it would be version two, which is mud rather than soil rather than stones. Um, but, uh, and hopefully over the years we can build it up. I don't know enough about this, but is there the opportunity for a wildflower? Yeah. I think the idea was that people would walk along there in the process of feeding ducks and things. But at the moment, well, Ian showed an old, uh, a very old picture from 20 years ago, and it was quite a wide bank. Um, so, so we needed to be flat and not a mound. Mm. Or a little yeah. Okay. Yes. The, 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 sorry, the, the um, section by the road is high rise so that would be road by high rise anyway, so we wouldn't be able to have all of it. Just what that was. Okay. I'm just mm. not sure about walking along it. It's quite dangerous that going coming round that corner. Um, if you're encouraging people to walk on it and feed ducks from it, I'm not sure that's a good, well, good thing. But we could always put gullies back into it to get get the road water to flow up it, mm -hmm. and it will over the years become rough grass because it will get mowed very often. Yeah. So it will become quite rough and rugged. Can we just keep on the table while the flowers just as an option to yeah. consider in the future? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We don't want people to walk on it and having flowers at a few foot high, right? The corners. Okay. And then they'll need to be cleared, won't they? Mm -hmm. some point. It's, um, oh, we, can, we can put it out there. It's, uh, no, no cheat. Yeah. Um, any other thing? Because I'm wondering whether they can put, you should be my notice, whether they can put a gap between the shutters. The gravel walls to try and get the stuff to spread through. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Whether you lose all the mud, I don't know. I think it's something that could have been a bit of um, water iris and something like that in there, it would disappear. I think there's quite a lot of that further up towards the western end of the pond. Mm -hmm. So uh, I think it would soften up quite nicely. Yeah. It'll get green out of you somehow, so we don't need to worry about it. And the post on the top, obviously, we've got this wooden trim off. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Okay. Okay, um, any other comments? I'm getting a general sort of feeling we're okay on that. Mm. One There's thing a... to note is that you will have to get high rate permission before you can proceed. Which presumably is an email. Yeah. Okay, and that's a separate, a separate action, is it? I need to really sort of agree on. You just need to give me permission to go and do it. Okay, right, do so. Think, do you think it would just be an FYI, or do you think, because um, that won't look like it's there? Well, that would be down to a, a temporary a TTR road to then close the road. Yeah. So they would do it. They've said they'll do it in sections, um, so that they're not closing the whole length of road. Um, and uh, that would be a sort of separate question as to whether it meets highway conditions once the work is done. That's more the, the bigger mm -hmm. question on the highways. I don't think this will take. I don't know. <laughs> it was no, agreed at the last meeting that I would write to the houses that are boarded away once we have a, an agreement to you know, say this is what it's going to look like. I mean, A14 legacy project, we, we, we had it agreed probably a year ago. Getting on for it. Um, so it's been out there, but this is the first time we've really um, discussed the detail. 
So, with the uh, provider, not provider, the keeping in mind the wildflowers, if that's an option, <coughs> are we happy if we um, ask the A14 Legacy Project to continue with the design as shown, version 2 with the soil? Yeah, okay. I'm going to propose that. Can I have a second, please? Oh, have a second, all in favour? Say aye. Right, thank you. And as part of that, we need to ask our clerk to uh, communicate uh, workers, to coordinate with um, H -E Highways. Oh, it's not it's not the CCC. CCC. Um, perhaps I could tell us who the, uh, the, 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 the new county, county traffic person is to, to do. Um, so that's a proposal that we um, communicate with them. Can I have a second to that, please? Yeah, here's a second in. All in favour? Brilliant. Thank you very much. That's good. So that's uh, one, one, three, got four. Um, right, as you saw in the email, one, one, three, point five is to be scrapped oh, from this agenda. Deferred. Deferred, sorry, deferred. Uh, it seems that we were running a bit of ahead of ourselves and things aren't quite that far advanced. So, all very mysterious, but uh, can we propose that we don't just. I'm going to propose therefore that one, one, three, point five, the, the new bench. Is deferred to another meeting. Can I have a second of that, please? Here in seconding. All in favour? Okay, that's fine. Thank you much. Um, and then finally, we have 113.6. This was what we alluded to about we had um, suggestions of the, the wear, uh, the far bank of the wear, the southern side of the wear. <coughs> lots of overhanging trees. It's been a problem for a little while. Trees don't look too nice, there's a few dead ones, and also it keeps the sunlight out of the water, so there is a suggestion that uh, we'll put here. It's questionable as to whose responsibility it is, but the estimated cost of the work is £180, and I think the suggestion is that it will make such a, a benefit to parishioners and the parish that we go ahead and do it um, and advise those that we think is a uh, possibility that we've done this as a one-off and that we don't want to be a, a questions for future years. So, if you're okay with that, or do you want to discuss that at all? Any sort of outstanding concerns? No? Okay, well I propose that we ask... Is it, will that Ian get the following quote? Yeah. So, do we need to come back if it's more than 180? Do we need to have a limit? You can set a limit. To what do you think? You have, to go, have you had to go to 250? Well, 180 is a, is a day's work. Yes. Is that where it's come from? Yeah. Okay. So if it uh, swings into, you know, probably looking at another half, half. So it's a, that's a unit of one. So it might be one and a half or two. Like okay. Right. Well, let's let's go for one unit. I mean, if it's more than that, you can come back. Unless you're, unless you're suggesting we, we have a budget of 270. I'd go for two yeah. I think it's going to take longer than a day. So we think we think it works that, that important. Yeah. Yeah. With some help from volunteer group, yeah. we might. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't know whether we get. Yeah. You might, I think it might take longer than a day. Three minutes. But it will certainly help if we can have some knowledge just to move some debris. Okay. Okay. Well, with the um, let's propose that we get on with that work with a, a maximum budget of two hundred and seventy pounds. Hopefully, it'll be less than that. Um, can I have a second of that proposal? Hands are second again. All in favour? Show of hands. Brilliant. Okay, thank you very much. Um, that's, that covers 113, all the parts 113. Now, 114 is the Finance Committee recommendations and coming onto budgets and whatever. Um, I'm just going to suggest that we bring forward 115, which is the suggestion or recommendation that we. Um, in consideration whether to continue to pay for diffusion tubes. The reason why I'm suggesting we bring it forward is it's not included, it's assumed in the budget recommendation that they're not there. So um, it, would, it kind of suits me or my, my, my reckoning that if we discuss that matter, uh, that will sort of um, tick things off in a logical order. So are you happy that I bring 115 forward? I'll have a second for that, please. Yep. I'll second me all in favour. Right. Okay, so uh, over the years, um, since, um, since uh, 2019, we've been monitoring the uh, carbon dioxide 
Nitrogen dioxide. It's NO2, isn't it? Not CO2. In the um, And we've got quite an interesting graph, but it does come at a cost. Uh, and as you'll see from the supporting documents, it hasn't sort of fully been uh, endorsed by the County Council, I think that's fair to say. Um, and so the suggestion or question is whether we continue, the question is whether we continue to pay for those diffusion tubes. Over to you to discuss. So we haven't used them for any information. But the data says you're below the limit, well below. limit and you're only mm -hmm. measuring NOx, which is a very small part of blue mm -hmm. of the vehicles, so it's not that. It's only really measuring diesel pollution as opposed to petrol pollution. So, uh, if you look at it, it's not trending up, it's kind of the other things that go really trend down, resistantly, but... That would be due to COVID, I think. It's only the last year it was due to COVID, but it is a quarter of what... Mm -hmm. Did I pick up that the data is not been useful in um, arguing a case anyway? Because it's not accepted. The um, CCC had advised that they do not have an air quality officer who can utilise this data. So they cannot undertake analysis of data even if the PC were to provide it. I mean, it's, it's interesting. And I think if we were to stop. Um, I don't know how much notice we need to give to those who, who we buy the tubes off, but I noticed from here that we started them in October 2018. So we could quite easily, you know, we would then have three years worth of data, mm -hmm. which would be a significant chunk, and then we could always come back to it, I mean, to see if things change. I mean, it's interesting that things haven't really changed, and in some ways they seem to got better over the last. Uh, so whether, that's, whether that is due to uh, COVID, but yeah, whether we, whether we start again later, but it is, it is quite a cost. <coughs> Andy, what are you thinking about? Yeah, yeah, I, I change the tubes every month, um, <laughs> a bit of input. Uh, no, I agree, uh, the figures are pretty stable uh, over the period. They're not uh, particularly high, uh, either the crossroads or near the shop where we place them. Um, so I'm not saying that I don't want them to happen, but I think at this stage there's nothing to indicate that they're going to go up unless the traffic levels get extraordinarily high even over the highest period when we're getting 50,000 cars a, a week uh, it w wasn't really close to a, the European limits um, so I, I, I tend to concur with, with your, uh, your views uh, but re I think if we could review it if we see any significant changes in vehicles in some form that might be useful it's a good monitor just to keep a, a check on it and about, and about, I think, uh, Wendy orders them on a monthly basis as they are time, time limited. Uh, you can only uh, use them within three months of them uh, being ordered. So I think you could cancel it probably with, with a month's notice if you wanted to. Uh, yeah, to um, the other thing is, of course, they're not, they don't have much of an installation problem. So it's not like we've got a big bit of kit we have to pay for each time they are just a little tube. So if we did need to go back to put them in, there wouldn't be any. Big, big cost involved in that. So, have we discussed that? No, we have Okay. So, then pose, I'm going to propose that we, we stop the tubes um, at the earliest point that we can with, with Wendy. Um, have a second of that, please. Rob, second, all in favour? Brilliant. Thank you much. Okay, so, get back to the, the big 114. Uh, so 114.1 is to receive the financial report. So bearing in mind that we're going to be going into budgets and things in detail, I'm going to pose, when you've all seen the financial reports, but don't particularly want to go through them, but I just, if we just, um, because we'll be covering various items within the bulk of this uh, section on the agenda. So if we just note and receive a comment that we have received reports, um, then um, we can move on from there. So I'm going to propose that we receive the reports. Can I have a second to that, please? Yep, yeah, Rob, all in favour? Brilliant. Okay, thank you very much. So we've, we've had those. Right, the next item to do with saving money is 114.2. Now you will obviously be aware that we had to have Zoom, the Zoom account when we were on virtual meetings. Now we can't have uh, virtual meetings. 
the suggestion is that we um, cease that account. Um, it has been, Zoom has been very useful for working groups when there's been four or five people in a meeting, but as it's on a casual basis, the thought there is that sometimes you get a benefit and they let you stay as long as you like. The alternative is you just spam back in, so it's not a public meeting. Um, and at £12 a month, it is a significant saving. Um, the parish council can't use them as a, as a media now. Do we need to discuss that? No? Okay, so the recommendation then, I propose that we, we cancel the current Zoom account as soon as we can. I have a second to that, please. Oh, <laughs> I'm not sure who was first then. I saw Rob there quite a while. So Rob can second again. Uh, all in favour, please show hands. Thank you much. Okay, right, one more call. So moving on to 114.3. Um, discuss and decide whether to remove the earmark reserves. This is a bit of a, 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 a accounting nicety. We've got various bits of money that are left over from earmarked uh, accounts. The suggestion is that the five pounds, the ten pounds, and the fifty-four pounds, uh, rather than just being left in an, in an earmarked account, they go back into general reserves. Do you wish to discuss that, or are you happy that they go? Into, okay. So I propose that they are put back into general reserves. Have a second. Here and second again. All in favour? Right. Thank you much. That's good. Right. The next one is 114.1 to approve the budget to the draft budget. Now, um, it is in October, uh, so we have to... <coughs> so the, the budget is all to do with the precept as to how much money we'll be spending it, etc. Um, so, just give me two seconds more before we stop watching around. The event's gone wrong. I've actually nicked down to the diffusion tubes and forgotten that the, bar, the budget's further back. <laughs> right, I'm there now. Um, so, yeah, so we need the, the, uh, the finance committee um, proposed this budget, uh, which then came up with a, a new precept of 31,550. So, um, we need to submit that to Huntington District Council uh, early in December. So. It is in October, so there are there is time to move things around if, if council aren't happy. So it's just a, a draft at the moment. So I don't know whether you, because uh, the, the queue was at the meeting. Um, uh, Nicola is our responsible one officer. I was there as well, so the three of us can address any questions that other councillors may have. So please fire away if you've got any. If you're just happy, that's, that's fine. Um, yeah. yeah, sorry. Um, so, this is a recommended increase of 3.1%. Yep. And the CPI index is apparently 1.8%. Right. Consumer price index. Mm -hmm. And I would find it hard to justify going up to 3%, mm -hmm. given the CPI is 18 So, I was looking to see how we could reduce it by what I think is about £500. Mm -hmm. Um, we have reduced the green open spaces, I think, already from 3,500 to 3,000. Mm -hmm. yep. But the expenditure in the last two years is actually around 2,500 rather than the 3,000. So I'd look to do a saving of £500 somewhere because I don't think 3% is something that we could go to questions with. Is any of that green open spaces? Changing due to main stem traffic and conflict across those two, are they separate? separate. Yeah. I mean, bear in mind we haven't done as much tree work as we have in the previous years, so for lots of reasons. Um, and the expectation is uh, certainly looking through the survey that Ian did uh, back in August. Uh, I really wouldn't want to cut it back too much further. We've already lost five hundred pounds. Um, it's a it, it's a reasonably significant figure, that's why I guess it always attracts attention. But it's the <coughs> one where we have um, perhaps the council of duty of care to anybody that's out there in those open spaces. And uh, we do need to make sure that a substantial number of quite old trees are looked at. So the other saving would be reduce the reserve contributions that you make on some of those lines? Possibly for a year. 
perhaps it's worth just saying a little bit about where we started off. So the, original, the first draft that we put together, we actually needed an 18% increase to get anywhere near it. So we've already taken quite a big knife to this. Costs have gone up, and we are moving the maintenance contract. We've estimated uh, 10,000 for that. Um, it may be that we have some savings there. So, but I think based on what we know today, our estimation of where things are, that's a pretty sane estimate. Um, and we have received some money from some of as well. Yeah, the easement um, obviously is, is limited to what we've spent it on. But one of the things that we've done is we've earmarked two thousand pounds of that for the LHI. So there's nothing in here for the LHI that we put in for the, the green, the uh, and the the one that we put, the most recent one we put in was for two thousand pounds. Um, it's not actually in this budget. The theory being that if we are successful at LHI, it would come out of that um, easement. I think though that the two thousand pounds is probably due in another twelve months after that. So oh, it's for this financial year. So the LHI bid is twenty two twenty three because it's two half a million in that financial year. Right. So that, that was one of the reasons why I say originally the, the budget increase was eighteen percent. So we had a look at it and realised that we may or may not be successful with that. So it's um, it would be wrong to put money in that you didn't know when you were going to spend. And the other question is whether this one that I'm involved with, whether you just put in a, a budget or a, a priest that doesn't match the budget, which was a concern there last week. I mean, we were only <coughs> Yeah, we've got question. Yeah. Fireworks. Mm -hmm. We've got eighteen hundred. Yeah. We do make some money back from that. Don't we? Some years we do, and some years we don't. Yeah. So um, there is there's the earmarked reserves where we hold the profit and loss made on the fireworks. So that's currently sitting at nearly four thousand. Yeah. So we've got the fireworks next month, which may add to it. Yeah. But we don't know. Um, so you could potentially tap into that. So just to reduce it's just saying eighteen hundred is the cost, pretty much the materials, isn't it? Yeah. So that seems you get no revenue back from it. So if you wanted to stay 500, you could make a Well, you've got your income there, in you? Oh, it's in the income as well, sorry. It's in your income, yeah. yeah. So but you could revenue. you could take some of the fireworks cost out of that earmarked reserve. And, yeah, okay. I've seen people saying this haven't gone up and so. You do increase the preset last yeah. year, though. Yes. 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 Just because we didn't increase it last year. People say this issue haven't increased to by the tune three percent, so I think it would be difficult to justify. The actual inflation rate in the last 12 months is 3.2%. It was the CPI, wasn't it? 1.8 in 2022 and anticipated 1.9 in 2023. And house inflation is 7%. Mm. So, anyway, um, I think that point. Things to be registered though that we didn't do that last year. It's the first time in a number of years that we have. Yeah. And the other thing is, I know you said from a band D, it was £83 pound delivered last, last year. So 3% on that would be getting up to £3. Pounds. So it's a question whether we can prove um, value for money. And you can do it on percentages, you can do it on. on, on, on Financial value. It's a question of whether we think we are providing good value for money. Um, so I don't know whether the other councillors have got a, a worry about the proposed 3.1 or whether there's a figure that people would feel more comfortable about. Because obviously we will obviously have to be accountable to our prisoners as to the people we've come up with and, and why. I'm concerned that we don't slip back like we did you know, 10 years ago, when we didn't really have enough money to cover um, things we really do need to do. And um, we have really gone at this budget pretty hard and cut quite a lot of out, certainly in terms of putting money aside to some of the um, potential costs in the future we might have replacing uh, the, the bridges, the browse, um, and other things like park maintenance and 
we, we've cut back on those monies that are going into those pots, which we've been doing over the last few years. Um, I think we also perhaps ought to think about where we sit in comparison to other parish councils. We've always been, for the number of households, we've got quite you know, good value for money. So I don't think we perhaps should uh, beat ourselves up too much about that. Okay. Um, I don't know where to get the situation is. Robin, Sarah, you Yeah, I'm kind of taught. I understand the concern for Russians around the precept. Equally, the real inflation that we'll be paying on the items we're buying will increase all that to a point. You know, and uh, we've got to be able to maintain for this. Mm. Yeah, so there is a bit of an unknown with the new maintenance contract. And that is a significant amount within the budget, isn't it? Hmm? It's a third. Yeah. Yes. I mean, is, it, is it worth waiting until we get some indication on that before we do finalise the project? Because that could give it completely away, can it? That's a good point. Oh, yeah. maybe not. We, we need to agree on the December. The 7th of December is the deadline for the pre sale. So we might not have a decision, but we might have an indication by then, maybe. Yeah, we've got one maybe or two in quotes. So well, that you, could you, make you, or break it, couldn't yeah. it? You've approved tonight so we can get the quotes out. So we can get the quarries out, can't we? Yes, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah, that's a good point. We don't need to. Yeah. I mean, with the, the, um, the hard work that's been done, we've got a proposed budget, it's in the draft, so we can take into account extra information that comes in between now and December. So we don't discuss it in November, but we did discuss it in December. I mean, obviously, we won't get any idea of quotes in by November, but we might by December. Okay. Just need double check them because the assembly meeting is the 6th so I'll need to wait and see when the precept deadline is. Okay. The we'll need to be on the November. Okay, just, yeah, I, I should have the date by the November meeting. Yeah, okay. The, okay, so I'm going to propose that we defer the decision until the, uh, the parish council meeting that most, that best suits, you have it, <laughs> it that best suits the, uh, the precept um, date. So that we defer to either November or December. Uh, can I have a second of that, please? Yeah, Rob's second, all in favour? That's five to five. Okay, thank you very much. So, good start on that. And, um, that's, uh, that's a good budget, I think. Let's uh, we'll see how we get on. Uh, we've done. So, so, we can't approve that we defer the budget, so do I need to defer one more, four more, five? Okay, clip off my team. I'm going to defer 114.5 for obvious reasons. Can I have a second of that, please? Please, someone second it. Well, thank you very much. All in favour of a difference? Great, thank you very much. Okay, we've done 115, the tubes. Um, this is to discuss and decide upon any actions with regards to the <coughs> shelter. Now, you remember that we had a report recently uh, about the state of the roof, and it was generally okay in terms of its sheeting. Um, as long as it wasn't disturbed. The issue now is that the the main wooden rafter, is it the rafter? The main wooden rafter is bottom at one end. So the uh, the corrugated sheets are just hold themselves up. One one side's okay, the other side is not very good. So the suggestion is that we can uh, put a new piece of wood in there or a piece of metal or something but without disturbing the, the sheeting. Um, is, that, is that enough information? I mean, there will be obviously a cost to it, but at the corner nearest to the pedestrian crossing, the end is completely rotten and not supported in the wood at all, not in support of the brickwork. The top end is not, not too bad, but it does either need a piece of wood to piggyback onto it, or even a piece of metal to make it into a sandwich. It's not supporting an awful lot, but if someone wants to climb on the roof, it wouldn't support them particularly well. So um, I wouldn't say it's dangerous, but I think some action is required on a fairly urgent basis. So that's the reason. <coughs> that's the <coughs> any sort of wish to comment about that. It might not cost too much because I don't think it's a big job. So it could just be a hand in there because you're saying that's all the hand in there. The maintenance person. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
piggybacking what's there, but on insurance that we don't disturb the sheets. And we are convinced that it's ours because I know there was a document about two months ago for this that we were talking about assets as to whether it was ours or whether it was Hunts District Council actually. It's on our asset register. I know it's on our asset register. There was another document, I can't remember what it was now, but. Um... Oh. It's always assumed to be ours, I've never seen that. So the well either way I think it's proven that we do do so into it or have a uh, approval to get on with that work. That proposal that uh, the maintenance person looks at it and undoes all the proposals for what material we need. Um, can I have a second to that please? Okay. Others, councils seem so 
I'll be coming 15, 30 minutes before meeting. So, uh, especially to try it out and see what happens, see what it's like. Yeah, that's true, I suppose. If it is successful and we end up being inundated, then perhaps we can move on to the Saturday option. Mm. Personally, I wouldn't do the Saturday family commitments, but I think coming before I meet you, coming anyway, it's easy to come. Mm. So you can work on, so. I just think if we're going to try it in the autumn months, it's very difficult for elderly residents to come here at 7 o'clock in the evening down a dark road to engage with us. So therefore, it's Saturday morning outside the shop and people are there anyway. It's not sure it's Saturday. I'm just looking to the legalities being outside the shop to stop parish council property. So I don't have a county council motion when I do it outside my residence. Permission, no. Okay. Okay, so we could ask permission from Sunday. Okay. Share the same opinion. I would not, not, for not wanting to do Saturday. I just think it's something that we have to commit to, and I think well, you're, you're happy to. I don't think I would be able to commit on a regular basis with everything else going on on Saturday, but I do think that filling up early is something pretty straightforward. Mm -hmm. well, I don't know if they're asked, it was just you outside the shop every Saturday, that's my <laughs> concern with the Saturday one. As councillors, as we can't be engaged too much in terms of discussion on the subject. You can miss it. Yeah. 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 Right. Um, sorry, I'm not sure if you just stop you walking through around, generally, around the village. Um, I've a number of times, and that's kind of the purpose, I guess, isn't it? You're, you're there and you can draw information as and when you will see fit. I think it's hard for people to keep their new the village to know who everybody is. Mm. I would be quite happy to do it in. November and December for a Saturday, and just to try it and see other people pass as well to do things before the celebration meeting. And then we'll report back in January, so I think that's good. Okay, that's kind, thank you. Um, is it okay to vote? The only, my only concern with that is what you're, you're willing to do it. If we start doing it, people do like it. How are we going to commit? Can we, if it's not something we can sustainably commit to, I wouldn't want to give people the precedent that we are going to do it if we're not. I think, I think before the meeting is a bit easier because I think more people are willing to help. But if, if we're the only one willing on a Saturday or available on a Saturday, we're just worried because you might get an uptake at the beginning because it's new and it could tear off anyway. You don't know. But. I think when I've seen the county council do it outside Morrison's, which I've seen them, it was a one off actually. Was it? Yeah. Um, but also, just from a, a lone worker point of view, be keen on there being two councillors there because you've effectively got a lone worker. It's a relatively public place, I'm sure that, you know, not too many angry parishioners in Hilton, but from the council's point of view, it needs to you know, manage its own work. Um, the general feeling, <coughs> I appreciate um, Heather's kind of comments, but I'm mindful of Rob's, can we carry it on? So, I mean, it is a, it's a trial, so I would suggest that we go for the 15, 30 minutes and see if we are missing out, or see what responses, and see whether we we need to um, consider a, a, a time other than before meeting. So for the time being, I'm going to propose that we have a six, three months trial for the 15 minutes, three minutes before meeting. Yes, right. <laughs> exactly, I'm trying to get a response. Because otherwise that has an impact on the kids. You're here at seven, aren't you? I'm here at seven. So we could, we could go half now, um, which, is, which is good. Um, is three months insufficient? Okay. But bearing in what? Three months from now, it's pretty straight for Christmas, isn't it? Yeah. Maybe six months? Yeah, because we're missing a meeting as well. We're, miss, we're missing <coughs> a, um, yeah, January meeting over there. So the proposal is that we have a 30 minute um, slot before parish council meetings where at least one or two parish councils are here to, and I'll not discuss, but to receive information from. 
uh, Krishna's bearing in mind that councils aren't, they, they can speak on behalf of themselves, but they can't speak on behalf of the council in this affair. So you need to be careful about what you actually agree to. By all means, you can, you can discuss and you can give your own personal views, which can then be carried forward to subsequent parish council meetings. So will there be a motion? We'll need to sort that out, yes, because otherwise it's going to be a bit tricky, but I don't make it too difficult. Maybe we could just set up, see if we do it. Maybe send out a, a spreadsheet, a, a doodle poll, whatever these things are. I'm sure that's not possible. Okay, so um, 30 minutes for six months. That's the recommendation of all business. Can I have a second of that, please? You have a second again? All in favour? Pretty much. Well. Okay. Thank you very much. All in favour? Um, right, this is to consider response to the Commissioner speak a likely satisfactory survey. Um, in previous occasions, we've very kindly asked our clerk to fill in the likely survey and put a survey agenda. Does anybody wish to get involved with the survey, or can I suggest that we ask? Because Nicola presumably gets involved with complaints and discussions with these people. Does anybody can I recommend or propose that we'll take her to quickly this through it? Yeah, absolutely. Can you happy to do that here? Yeah. Yeah. Sorry? So it's to be 10 minutes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's yeah. one in bit Okay, that's fine. So let's propose or let me ask Nicola to do that survey. Can I have a second please? Have a second here. Thanks very much. Uh, all in favour? Oh, let's miss that. Great. Thank you. That's five, thank you. Um, and then we move on to a, a second, well that's the problem isn't it? This is the, the next one is 119 to, we received a request from, I think it's Cambridge County Council, isn't it? Yes. Help me. Yes. This is to do with fostering. <coughs> uh, they were after banners and posters and things like that. Um, and the suggestion is, well, what do we want to do with it? They want you to fill in the form to let you know whether that would be possible so their recruitment officer can get in touch. Yes, I just... When, when their recruitment officer gets in touch, are you happy for posters and for banners? Not posters, just... So posters, but not banners. Mm. Yeah. I'd go for both. Banners and posters. I think the, 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 problem, well, the problem is with this sort of thing is how do you then, we have to be careful of the precedence, don't we? Because obviously, if, um, we then have to decide what's a, a banded case and what's not. And posters are very difficult situation, I think. I would be very concerned about the precedence this, this causes. So I mean, I'd be happy for posters on the, on the notice board, but I certainly wouldn't There's a real need for fostering foster parents, in particular in Cambridge, they are at their wits' end to touch recruit, so anything that we can do to assist and get young people into homes and make people think <coughs> demands the unusual. Mm -hmm. um. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's, that's the issue, isn't it? The banner not be used somewhere else. <laughs> <laughs> in a more public place. Yeah. We were expensive. That's true, yes, but we had the most thing. Because what's, what's our policy on, on media about what we put on our website? Uh, well, it can't be business permanent. I mean, would, would this be permitted under. Would a, would a post from our website be permitted? And that's an, an issue because quite often we get asked to do things, don't we? From and, and it is a problem that we've asked the Hilton community place to share if they think it's of interest. Yeah. 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 Is that the same as Facebook? Could you link something on Facebook? It would probably be the same as being on the website. Mm -hmm. It's just crazy what precedence it calls each other. That's the thing, this is a really yeah. good issue. We want to get behind it, but. And you do agree to this, and two weeks later, somebody comes to another poster, which is something perhaps more divisive and less 
easy for us all athletically to support, but on a set precedence, it's more difficult to say no. Mm. You don't allow commercial promotions or spam, but there's nothing to prevent um, in here that prevents the, uh, this sort of information being shared. So we will be, be okay? Okay. Well, I'm going to propose it that we get in touch and say that we're happy to have posters on our notice board um, and that we would allow these posters on our website. And what's it going to do? Perhaps I'm approaching those, but you need to ask one of the houses along there to put it on the side panel. I would therefore suggest that we could put it on webs for Facebook and be the does anyone want to have a banner? But I wouldn't want it on our loss. I would have trouble with it on Parish Council property with the investment. But if we, we could encourage others to put the banner up, then we, then we don't have to worry about what it actually says in the press of it. So whether we could put it in Spectrum or on, the, on Facebook. I'm taking a step at a time. The original proposal is that we put we allow posters up and that we put a post on the on website. Can I have a second of that please? Keep a second. All in favour? Okay. Now the other <coughs> question is what we do with a poster. Do we is anyone in favour of a poster on parish council land? Do you mean a banner? Sorry, a, ban a banner, sorry, a banner on parish council land. Yeah. For one week. So that's the proposal from Heather. Can I have a second of that option? No. Okay, so that's not really carried. It's a question of whether we then can do something to encourage parishioners to put the notice um, outside their property. Is that the permission or would that be that go through the um, spectrum? Spectrum. Uh, that, I think we probably need to speak to County Council first. Yeah, because it's basically advertising in yeah. public spaces. Okay. Mm -hmm. careful. But, but that's actually what they, they want us to do. I think yeah. perhaps compromises you in the Facebook note, which is probably a good target for the type of people that may want to post foster, moral assumption. But if you say that the County Council are looking for ways to promote it, you could be more interested in doing so themselves. It might be better than coming. Specifically saying, does anyone have a banner up? Because that looks like we're promoting an actual point. Yeah, it doesn't feel right asking <coughs> someone to put a banner outside the house because we don't want it on our property. But I think asking people, to, yeah, I think what you said might be a good way around it. Okay. Right, yeah, that's good. I think we've, we've covered that. Um, so thank you on that one. Can you just clarify what we're doing something? We're posters on the notice board. And Nicola will put the posters on Facebook and point out that this is this is County Council wanting support with fostering. And that if they want to help in any way, then they get in touch with Cambridge County Council. Um, <coughs> payments received. We received this is uh, item 120. Payments received. This is uh, we've received half of our precept from this year, uh, 15,300. This is a final, isn't it? The final payment. This is the second half. Yeah. Second half, yes. So we've received the second half of our, of our current precept. Uh, we've then got a long list of, uh, for under item 121, approved payments. Uh, anything in there that you have issues with or your clarification with? I think they're all generally standard. So I'm going to propose that we uh, we pay all those. Can I have a second, please? Can I second it? Uh, all in favour? Show of hands. Thank you very much. Um, item 122 is the OpsCam Arc Spatial Framework Survey. Another survey, a rather large document. 
Um, two hundred and forty-two pages. Um, I'm not entirely sure how we're going to do that survey. I mean, is it even too much for a clock to do? Have you actually looked at this? Yeah, I went through it to give you a spot of dots. Yeah, but I mean, the thing is, it's to do the survey. Is it? Is it a monster? Has anyone got have any feelings on it? I was surprised when I drove through uh, Connie's and say that they've got posters on the road to say no to the ark. I hadn't realised it was coming quite so far. Yeah. There's a possibility it's coming over this way. Yeah. But this survey looks like a scoping survey and there's going to be more surveys later on when they've got some bit more links in the bones. So yeah. I was almost tempted to do this one if there was somewhere they know what they're talking about. Because I think the thing is it was going south, wasn't it? And then uh, suddenly they thought, well, let's take it north, something to develop a lot more action. Well, yeah, 48 is um, mm. one option, but can we mm. it's further north of the different mm. Yeah, yes, it's sort of this, there's lots of posters in South Cambridge, um, but it's suddenly sort of uh, heating us a bit. Because we, we earlier voted that it wasn't, we didn't think it would affect us too much. But if we do leave it, then we wouldn't get anybody involved in doing it, especially whether we, we ask the clerk or whether a council is involved or whether we just say nothing. Not, not sure the questionnaire is going to have much impact on what they might do. When you look at the questions, I want to just the time at this point, because it's not yes. specific to a proposal, is it? It's just quite generic. It is. I haven't seen the thumbs up and the thumbs down before the server, is it? Well, two thumbs up and two thumbs down. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, and the fist for neutral. <laughs> um, okay, so I'm getting a general sort of uh, unsure, so I'm going to propose that we do nothing to that one. Um, will I get a second for that proposal? I will get a second for that proposal. Yeah. 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 Okay, so keep it up to me. Just that I, uh, I, I, I still think <laughs> it's, um, okay. it takes a bit of time. Discuss me, it doesn't obviously be here. No, this is all time, isn't it? So it is it's from very little. I don't think we're going to get anything from it. It's bearing on what we agreed earlier. Yeah. 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 Okay, so I'm going to propose we do nothing. Here in seconding that. All in favour? That's a fine, thank you very much. Oh, you know, that's good. Um, and then finally, uh, one, two, three is council's items. Information and discussion, no decision can be made. Um, so just general comments made to the floor. Here, have you got any no. general comments? No, I think they're in your book. Hey, oh, if I, I was impressed. <laughs> 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 okay. Sarah? No. Okay. Uh, Hello? Um, I'd like to know what's happening back at the board. We'd really appreciate a report at our next meeting for the working group. I can't really like that. No, you can't. I'll use it to probably pick up so I can no. But we'll have to find out, who, remember who the chair is and see. Um, I, I note, with reference to fireworks, notice that the village website has put out that it's going ahead on the day we agreed. Uh, I did have a comment from the uh, gentleman who's organised the fireworks saying he's kind of waiting before he does in terms of communication in any more form until the <coughs> parish council have led the way with their, with their formal announcement. Have we not made a formula? Are you waiting for the posters in order? Hmm? Okay. Right. Okay. Right. Give me the details for the poster and I'll make a poster. Done. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Fine. That's great. Thank you very much. Uh, I think that concludes the meeting. So I'll, I'll, I'll close the meeting at I don't know, five to nine. Um, thank you all very much. See you.